I came to Kosovo to be close to the mountains, experience the beautiful nature and hopefully have a little adventure. I picked up my rental car from the Pristina airport and headed to the second largest city of Kosovo, Prizren. And so I have arrived to Prizren. Now I'm here in my Airbnb. That's where my goal is to get to the mountains. Well, I'm not sure how much I, I can do hiking on this trip because there's still so much snow on the mountains. Probably I cannot go to the highest peaks, but uh, for sure I will do as much hiking as possible. Today I'm just gonna chill and I think I, I'm gonna check the castle later today. First I have to get some food. My flight to Kosovo was in the early morning hours and I was absolutely exhausted at this point. But after getting a delicious local meal, I got some new energy and I was really excited to visit the Brisbane Fortress. Surprisingly steep climb all the way to the top. Very short climb though, just like 10-15 minutes from the city center. The views to the Shar Mountains are pretty impressive from here. This is what I've been waiting for. I've been missing mountains so much. It is really beautiful. I'm really getting itchy feet here. I think tomorrow morning I'm gonna head to the mountains, do a little hike. I think I'm heading to the village of Prevala, around 30 minutes away from Prisren, and from there there should be a lot of hiking options. Maybe I will go to this alpine lake, which should be in over 2,000 meters altitude, so might be still snow there. Let's see. I'm excited. I'm excited. Let's go to the mountains. But first, let's enjoy the Prisren fortress and its incredible city and mountain views. just rising it's like 5 30 a.m. having my morning coffee and then it's time to drive to village of Prevala and start the hiking so I have arrived to the trailhead a little bit outside of the Prevala village. There are just some like a uh, bit more serious hikers going up to the trail. All of them have the um, snowshoes with them so probably they are going all the way to the highest peaks around here. So the lake is called Yasinka Lake or something like that. It's in around 2000 200 meters altitude. The starting point for this trek is around 1400 meters. So the elevation gain is like nearly 800 meters. So there definitely is more snow than I expected already in the beginning of the trail. But this part is in the middle of the forest so the sun doesn't get here easily. So that affects a lot also. There is some more open space coming now so yeah, there is no snow on the trail over there. So far it's been quite easy to move forward in this hike. Just a bit snowy and a bit wet. Some water also on the trail. are getting very beautiful here and the sun is starting to shine also more. Even if I don't get to the lake, I'm already happy that I went this far. It's, it's beautiful. I think this is a good place to have a little breakfast. I'm gonna eat here a bit and then continue forward. Some burek leftovers from yesterday.
definitely getting a bit cold when staying still for a while there. It seems like a lot of people have put the snowshoes already on here. So let's see. Now it's getting a little bit steeper here. And the forest is quite thick at this point. Oh, it's getting tougher and tougher and my feet are sinking deeper and deeper in the snow. If the snow is getting deeper, then I have to turn back definitely. I'm getting to a bit more open area, so this gives me some hope. Getting a bit sketchy going up the steep hill and sinking in the snow more and more all the time. I really hope, I really hope the lake is near though. This ending is pretty tough. Not because it's steep or anything, but because of the snow. I don't see the lake anywhere near here. Not sure how far it is. Man, it's been amazing. I think I try to go a little bit forward, but um, if I don't see any sign that the lake is very near, then I will turn back. It doesn't feel that safe anymore. I have to be a bit careful. Oh man. Call me a pussy, but I'm turning back. To my understanding, the lake was actually somewhere right around here. But I guess it's pretty clear why I didn't see it. The whole snow situation had made me think very unclearly. But I really did enjoy every single moment in this amazing hike. This was definitely a right choice. I think I'm sinking even deeper in the snow when going down and I still had to go the same way back for around 7 to 8 kilometers. Prizren is a beautiful historic city with lots of Ottoman and Turkish influence. In the morning the city wakes up really slowly. Coffee shops are opening first and getting slowly filled with people. But it's in the evening when the city gets fully alive. You will be having a hard time finding free table in a restaurant in the city center. I just checked into my apartment here in Chakova. This is a bit too much for me really. It's like super modern and in great condition. A very big apartment with big balcony also. But this is what you can get in Kosovo for like around 40 euros, 35 euros per night. Not bad, not bad. This is Chakova in the morning. Well, it's like 10 a.m. and the place is completely dead. Uh, I'm sure in the evening it's gonna be happening a lot. There's like a lot of bars and restaurants. Well, basically the whole street over there is just full of restaurants and bars. I think the local people, they are not morning people at all. Chagova has the biggest bazaar in the whole country and it is very historic city as well. It should be a like really relaxing atmosphere. I'm just gonna spend one night here and have a quite chill day. Do like a tiny, tiny hike on top of one hill to get a nice view of the whole area. This place is also famous for like arts and crafts. So it can be a very good place to buy some souvenirs, some cool handmade stuff. And I think I want the local traditional hat to my hat collection. I have quite a few traditional hats from different countries. It's kind of my thing to get one cool traditional hat from every country I go. But first, let's get some food. The local cuisine mainly consists of meats, dairy, veggies and bread. 
It is quite heavy as expected in a mountainous country. My favorites were the pepper stuffed with local cottage cheese, which I had on almost every meal. Overall, all the food I tried were really tasty and easy on my wallet as well. Walking uphill to Chaprati Hill. It's like just 15-20 minutes from the center to the hill. This is a quite large area. I'm not really sure where to go. Like you can see the accursed mountains and you can see the Shar mountains from here. So basically there are mountains in every direction. Different kind of views depending where you go. So behind me these are the accursed mountains and it's Albania that way, if you go a little bit further, and Albanian Alps. Mission successful, so I got the local traditional hat one more to my collection. Good morning, I'll be heading to Beja now for two nights over there. There I will do definitely some hiking. But yeah, I'm gonna try first to one waterfall, which is a bit north from Beja actually. So I will pass by Beja and check out that waterfall and then come back. Just arrived to the waterfall and I put my hiking boots on. It seems like a bit of a touristic place, but there are no tourists anywhere basically. I'm sure this place is popular in the high season for the local people. There are some restaurants and some hotels also in the area, but now everything seems closed. It's raining also a bit and it's like Wednesday now. It's a bit confusing, like I just walked through a hotel basically. There was no other way to enter, but I think I'm getting closer to the waterfall now. Also a cave at the waterfall which is worth visiting. Guided tour made it actually surprisingly interesting even I'm not a fan of caves in general. So now I'm gonna head to Beja and get to know the city of Beja a bit and prepare for tomorrow's hiking. It's around 6 a.m. I'm just heading to Rukova Valley. I'm gonna be hiking to Lake Lekvinat, which shouldn't be in that high altitude. I hope I can reach that lake and have a nice time in the mountains again. So let's go. to the trailhead which is restaurant actually this restaurant is called Cook. it was like almost one hour ride quite a long ride and the end part was quite steep the scenery is beautiful so I found the correct trail a bit confusing beginning but now I'm on the right track The beginning of the hike has been quite steep and there is already some snow on the ground. But I will reach the lake for sure. The lake is actually located on the border between Montenegro and Kosovo. 
Remember to watch your step. There can be a bit of uh, mud in here, as you can see. Definitely getting snower and snower when I'm getting up, but I will make it. I will make it. Steep, quite steep hike. Don't think the lake is that far, but the other thing is, I don't know, will I be able to see anything? It's very foggy here. Probably the visibility is gonna be very poor. Doesn't matter, I just wanna make it there. I guess it says 10 minutes to the lake. Looks like I have arrived to the lake. <laughs> Epic views, right? <laughs> It is so, so, so foggy right now. Can't see a thing, but I'm gonna get some snacks here. <laughs> and hopefully I will see a bit more, but the lake is actually frozen, so cannot see the lake color at all. This, this lake should be like very green color. This feeling is very nice when you don't know what to expect because there is not much information like how is it in this time of the year. Both of these hikes in Kosovo have been epic adventures, I had to say. And most of all, I just love to be close to the mountains. I have really missed mountains a lot. So happy to be back in a place where are so beautiful mountains everywhere, basically. Woke up early this morning and, and so it's a nice sunrise. So rushed out to get some drone footage of the city of Peja. The sleepy city in the morning. Well, I'm still half asleep, but have to get the drone up fast. The mountains are like lighting up. Peja was my favorite city in Kosovo. The Lombard River or White River flowing through the city has a very unique and beautiful color and it's simply stunning. I also like the laid back vibe of the city and just look at those mountains. I really love seeing the mountains like every direction you look. It's just the best. There's nothing better. I'm leaving the city now, heading towards Pristina, away from the mountains, sadly. So on the way to Pristina, I think I will stop on this one waterfall, like halfway between Peja and Pristina. So that's a good stop. Sure, am I going the right way? There are no signs to the waterfall at all. I'm just uh, following the Google Maps, but it doesn't really work perfectly in this country. This was definitely not the correct place. I have to turn the car around and check out the map again. Got a bit lost. I can see the waterfall would be like right over there. The entrance must be like on the other side. I had to drive somehow to the other side. This kind of interesting random place I found out this very colorful birds here. They have their nests in the mud. And there was also an eagle, but I just missed it while I changed longer lens to my camera. Sometimes it's fine to get lost. It's just the first time getting a bit lost here in Kosovo. But I think now I found coordinates to get to the waterfalls. Let's try one more time. I've seen a lot of bad roads in Kosovo, but this was the worst for sure. I hope the car tires will be okay. And let's hope I'm in the right place also. <laughs> Thank you. 
let's see where I can find the waterfalls. hiking to get up a bit more and see the waterfall. There are like a couple of different waterfalls, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's getting a quite high. I'm not so good with heights. This one too exceeded my expectations and also it's a bit more sketchy than I thought. to Pristina. Quite a hassle again to get the car parked here. It's never easy close to the center in cities of Kosovo. If you get easily frustrated in traffic, I wouldn't recommend staying close to the center. You cannot get to the center fast. It's crazy. It's crazy. At least this was the experience I had in every city in Kosovo. There is always a traffic jam around the city center except in the early morning. And then you have to find a parking too, which will usually cost a couple of euros a day unless your accommodation have free parking included, like I had in Pristina. You can find cheapest rental cars for around 20 to 30 euros a day, but I'd suggest getting some good quality car you can trust. Also better take a proper insurance since traffic can be a bit crazy and road conditions are pretty poor, especially in the mountains. For 35 euros a day I got a Ford Focus with full protection insurance. And that concludes my trip to Kosovo. I had the much needed nature and mountain adventure. I just dropped knee deep in the snow. Kosovo. Thank you for this unforgettable experience. I'll bring snowshoes next time. Bella.